So if you're interested in growing hydroponically, or if you've got your first unit and you're feeling a little overwhelmed, I'm just going to go through in this video some of the things that I've learned in over four years of growing hydroponically, a couple of things I would suggest to you, and some things to avoid, and some of the common problems that you might run into. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I am Kiri and I am just a city girl who wishes she was a country girl who is living in the burbs. And if you are new here then hello. So we talk about all things micro homesteading, growing indoors hydroponically and growing outdoors as well as ways to just become more self-sufficient and reduce your reliance on the grocery store. So if that is your thing or if you would like that to be your thing then go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will know when I post videos in the future. So today I just wanted to talk to you guys about getting started with growing hydroponically. There are so many different units out there that you could get. For this video, I'm going to focus more on Arrow Garden and just some of the things to consider if you're getting started. So I have a new Arrow Garden sprout. Um, I am going to do a separate video on how to set it all up and some of those questions. This is going to be more about things to look out for when you're just getting started hydroponically. One of the first things you're going to need to consider is what do you want to grow? Do you just want to have a few herbs so you can have them in the kitchen all year round? Are you looking to grow lettuce or do you want to branch out and grow more things like tomatoes or peppers or um, eggplants or things like that? So having an idea of what you want to grow is useful because then it can kind of determine what model might be best for you to get. So once you have an idea of what you want to grow, the next thing that you're going to need to do is to pick out a model. So I mentioned the sprout. This is one of the smallest ones. They used to have one called the Herbie. I don't think they do that anymore, but it was geared towards more um, little kids. But this one grows three pods. Um, so if you just want a few herbs, then that might be a good one. It doesn't have a very big footprint, um, but you also aren't going to be able to go much further than growing herbs or some micro dwarf varieties. Um, I will talk about that a bit more in a minute. But then you get into some of the bigger models like the Harvest, there is another which holds about six pods I believe and the Bounty is about nine. Then if you get into the bigger ones, which is what I have, I have the Arrow Garden Farm Plus and um, that one can grow or that one has 24 pods. And different models are also going to allow you to go to different heights. So a lot of the basic models are, aren't going to go more than about a foot. Um, when you get into the farm models, not only do you get more space to grow width-wise, you also get more space to grow height-wise. So on the Arrow Garden Farm, that one goes to a foot. The Arrow Garden Farm Plus that I have goes to two feet. And the Arrow Garden Farm Plus XL goes to three feet in height. So that's the biggest one that they make currently. Um, so that will allow you to grow a lot taller things like peppers and tomatoes. So the number of pods is important but you also have to remember and it's something that I see new people that start growing with Arrow Gardens do. They get super excited and they plant in all the holes. The holes are kind of misleading. Um, while it seems like you could plant in all of them, depending on what you're growing, it is usually not a good idea. So one of the things I would suggest is don't plant in all the holes. It is also going to depend on what you are planting, but if you are doing something like a pepper or tomato, then you definitely are not going to want to use all the holes. You also have to keep in mind how the different things are going to react and what nutrients they need. You have to think about the root system that they're going to create. Now, if you're getting started, this is all probably overwhelming. You may not know um, what to expect, but things like a tomato or a pepper are going to have a much larger root base than say something like some thyme or even, an, well, the lettuces can get bigger root systems, but they're not going to draw as much nutrients as say a tomato does. So if you're going to be putting in a tomato, then you may not want to be putting much else in there. Now, that's not to say that you can't, um, and it could work. So there's been times where, especially when I was getting started, I would plant everything and I totally planted all the holes. So don't get me wrong. I've totally done that. Um, but it's then you can, then it gets overcrowded. You have a lot of issues with having air circulation. So, it's just good to rein it in a little bit um, and to give some space. It's the next time you plant, plant a little bit more once you've learned a bit, um, but it is good to kind of just not use all the holes to start. Talking about not using all the holes. 
one thing I found, if I could get it open. I just got these, they just arrived today. Um, or, oops. These little covers. And these ones are totally made by Arrow Garden, and you absolutely do not need to use these specific ones. What you, I can't hold on to it. What you do need to do though, is any of the holes that you are not using need to be covered. Um, so these work great and I'll put the link to anything I'm mentioning down below in case you want to check it out. You could use, um, golf balls fit really well in the holes. I just don't have a whole bunch of golf balls sitting around. Um, but basically you want to cover up any of the holes that are not being used because we don't want the light to get into the water. I'll get to the why you don't want the light getting in later on when I talk about issues. Another thing to consider is, are you going to use their seeds? are you going to get your own seeds? Same in the uh, sprout that I just ordered, it has a little label on the top and the pod is in there and the seeds are already preceded in these. So the idea is these, you can just take them, pop them into your unit and you are good to go. Me, myself, I only grow heirloom seeds. That's just my own preference, it's just what I like to do. So I get my own seeds all of my seeds, if you've watched any of my other videos, are pretty much from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. This is a dwarf tomato that only grows to like six inches tall and it's super cute. Um, but so I only use the heirloom seeds. So for me, I don't buy the pre-seeded pods. I get these. They're basically just a bulk bag of sponges. And then I also get a bulk, a bulk bag of the baskets. You can see them in there, a whole bunch of baskets. And then what that enables me to do is to put any of the seeds that I want from my own varieties and grow them in the Arrow Gardens. There's nothing wrong with growing the Arrow Garden seeds. Um, I have seen some people complain of having weeds or not having the seeds that they were expecting in the pods, um, but Arrow Garden tends to be pretty good. If you have an issue, you can contact them and they will usually send you some, some new pods. So that's not a huge concern, but, but it's still something else that you're going to want to consider in terms of what seeds you're going to want to grow. I have a huge seed collection. This is just a little bit of it. I will put the link um, up above to my going through my whole organizing my seed collection. Um, if you want to check that out, I definitely have a seed problem. Total seed addict. Um, but yeah, so that is one thing to consider. The other thing that is important, and this gets back to avoiding um, getting light in, if you are using your own, if you are using the grow baskets and the grow anything pods, you are going to want to make sure that you put the label on top. Again, we will talk about that in a minute when we talk about light. Um, these are some of the old ones. These have to be ironed on, but they have new ones that are stickers, which would be way better. Again, I will put that in the description below. So the next thing you are going to want to make sure that you have when you have your unit is to have a small oscillating fan. Why? Because it's going to help with the air circulation. Um, and so we definitely want it to oscillate. We don't want one that is just blowing constantly. And this isn't a, um, a really vigorous wind or anything. We just want to have a little breeze that kind of passes by um, all of the, that passes by the plants. Now this will help with the air circulation, which can be useful, if, especially if you have lettuce, because that can get some crispy tips on it, if it does not have good air circulation. But also what it helps do for things that have stems or more stems like plant i'm thinking like tomatoes or peppers or things like that is the breeze passing by will help them grow stronger stems which is important to having a stronger plant so what water are you going to use in your unit um there are people that will be very much for one versus the other um, myself, I have, for the most part, always used tap water. I have not had an issue with it. That will also depend on your water. Uh, if you do have concerns, you could use a filtered water, definitely. Um, you're not going to want to use well water, or if you have softened water, you're not going to want to use those. The, why? The well water can have a lot of dissolved solids, which can then go ahead and clog your pump. And softened water tends to have an excess of sodium in it to soften the water. And then that is not necessarily good for your plants. 
but you can always give it a try and if it doesn't work then you can switch it out. Another thing that sometimes people ask about when they're just getting started are what are the blinking lights that happen on the units. Now that's going to depend on what unit you have. The farms are very different because they have a whole display panel um, but typically the lights are going to refer to a low water or that it's time to add nutrients. Um, for the ones where it's time to add nutrients, typically that's on a, just a 14 day rotation. So when you set it up, it sets the timer for 14 days and then it'll start blinking and remind you that you need to add nutrients into it. Uh, the other one is for the low water and that will just let you know that you need to top it up so that your system doesn't run dry and then potentially damage your pump. So another thing to mention about the lights is the first time you turn it on and plug it in, that's going to be kind of set as the time that the lights are going to come on. So depending where the unit is, the lights can be very bright, especially on some of the bigger units. So you may want to offset that um, by changing when the lights come on and when they go off. It doesn't really matter. Like they can be on during the night if it's downstairs in the basement and no one's around it. What's more important is the length of time that the lights are on for and that's already taken into account in the system so you can change the time that the lights come on if you want uh, you basically all you need to do is hold down the light button for about five seconds and then that will reset the lights to come on at that new time so I know for me um, I have the spout right now set up upstairs in the bedroom and so they were coming on they were staying on until like 11 o'clock um, and I wanted them to go off sooner. So this morning when I got up, I just held down the light button and reset the lights to come on at an earlier time. Uh, so then they will go off at an earlier time. So that's easy to change and you can change it as many times as you need to. Another thing that is important in the air garden is pruning. Because we don't have an unlimited amount of vertical space, depending on what it is, we'll need to be pruned. Um, certain things can grow really tall and really crazy, like dill or even cilantro and basil can really get going. Uh, so you're gonna wanna typically prune them and pay attention to that so that you have healthy plants that aren't getting too tall and spindly and getting up to the lights. And then if they get too close to the lights, they can get burnt, which, is not good. So we want to prune them down and cause the plants to get bushier rather than just growing tall. I will do a separate video on specifically just on pruning. Um, so look for that one in the future. So light height, how high should the lights be? Typically you're going to want to keep the lights that they are about four to six inches from the top of the plants which is another thing you need to consider when you're planting things in the air garden, especially if you are planting more of the holes, is to try and keep things that are gonna be at about the same height because otherwise keeping that four to six inch rule, if you've got something that's grown really, really tall and you're keeping it away, the light away from it so that it doesn't get burnt and so that it maintains that distance, certain things that are smaller or lower down might grow a little bit more leggy because they're stretching for that light. So as much as possible, try and keep things in there that are going to reach the same height and maturity and also grow at the same pace. Now that is much easier said than done. And it may mean that for some of the taller plants, you might just have to prune them more to reduce the height so that you can kind of keep things in line. But it's definitely something to consider, especially if you wanna grow a bunch of different things in the air garden, you'll have to kind of think and plan for that. Another really important thing is cleaning your air garden. Now, the different models will be cleaned in different ways. Um, the sprout, the new one that I got, I'm just noticing that it has a very, because it's so tiny, it has a more simpler design, so it's actually probably going to be a lot easier to clean than the Harvest, the Bounty, and the Farms. I have a whole video on how to clean it. I will put it up above where I disassemble the entire unit and go through all the steps, cleaning with bleach versus cleaning with vinegar, and I talk about all of that, so you can refer to that for more of the cleaning. But basically, you're going to want to make sure that you clean it, uh, you do a full cleaning um, after every harvest, so that you're kind of starting fresh and anytime you're going to be so anytime you're going to be putting in new plants you're definitely going to want to do a full cleaning otherwise you can do more of a surface cleaning say once a month just to kind of clean out the grow bowl and get things going but then there's other people that don't clean and if you've watched any of my garden tours then you have seen the state of my arrow garden farm plus and know that um you should do what i say and not what i do so <laughs> cleaning is important um and especially if you're running into any issues, doing a, a full deep cleaning is definitely beneficial. Um, how much you do in between, I'll leave that up to you to decide. 
Another thing that not everybody realizes that you can do um, is you can start seedlings in your air garden, which is great. Even in the small sprout that I just got, which only has three pods for growing plants, you can actually start, I believe it is 18 seedlings in that. Um, and each of the models that you can get has I'm pretty sure all of the models have a seedling starting um, deck that can go in and it, it's a separate top that will go on. So I know from my Air Garden Farm Plus on the one side I can, which normally grows 12 or has 12 pods, um, avail 12 holes available, I can actually start 80 or 81 seedlings in that one single side. So it's really, really handy, especially in the farm because then I can be growing something that I'm growing to maturity in one side and starting seedlings in the other. Plus, um, starting seedlings hydroponically or just plants hydroponically in general tend to grow, I've seen up to like three to five times faster than those grown in soil. So it's a great way to get a jump on starting seedlings or to start a bunch of them. You do have to take some care to then um, switch them over to soil. I have a video on transplanting your plants from the arrow garden to soil. That It's more around the mature plants, um, but when you are doing the seedlings in the arrow garden, you're still going to want to make sure that you give them a little bit of transition between the hydroponic environment to soil, and then you are definitely going to want to harden them off, which I also will be doing a video about very soon because it's getting close to hardening off time which is a step you never want to skip if you're taking something from indoors to outdoors. And that includes if you're just moving your indoor plants outdoor during the summer, which I would not encourage, but if you choose to do that, um, definitely harden them off. Don't just take them outside and pop them out there because your plants could die. Another thing to think about is pollinating. So certain, if you're growing things like tomatoes or peppers or eggplants, you're going to potentially be wondering about pollination. So a lot of the things that are in the air garden are self-pollinating, uh, but not all the things you can grow hydroponically are self-pollinating. So I have actually grown melons in the middle of winter in my air garden farm plus. I will put a link to that above um, if you want to check that out. Um, and those are definitely not self-pollinating, so I had to hand pollinate those. But the more common things like tomatoes and peppers are actually self-pollinating. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't help things along. Um, generally, what I'll do is gently, gently, shake the stem and that will help um, them to self-pollinate. But basically a self-pollinating flower has um, the male and female parts within it so that everything is there for it to pollinate on its own. Also having the oscillating fan that I mentioned earlier and that breeze will also help with that. So one of the things I wanted to mention is another tool that they sell. It's this little bumblebee and this is by Aerogarden and it is a pollinator. And when you press the button, it vibrates. Um, and this is to use to pollinate the flowers. You do not need this. Why do I have it? Because when I first got everything, I bought like everything they had um, and I grabbed this. But as I mentioned, the fan, um, or just giving the stem a little shake, or you can even get a little paintbrush if you wanted to, that is gonna suffice for pollinating. But if you do want, you can grab this, but you definitely do not have to. Another thing I want to mention is CalMag. So this is pretty much calcium and magnesium. This can be very beneficial um, in a hydroponic environment to help with tomatoes. Um, if you're seeing any blossom end rot, you may want to add this. It will also depend on what water you're using. If you're using tap water, it can have uh, minerals and stuff already in it, so you may not need it as much. Honestly, this is my first bottle of CalMag, which is kind of weird because everybody talks about it, but up until this point, I hadn't really used it. Um, my tomatoes have been okay, but I've seen some people complain about the tomatoes tasting watery or things not tasting as good in the uh, hydroponic environment, so adding some CalMag can help. It's definitely something I'll go into once I've played around with it a bit more, and I'll probably do a video on that at some point, um, but I did just want to mention it because it is something that a lot of people do find is beneficial when growing growing hydroponically. So another thing that you might come across when you're getting started hydroponically, especially if you're growing tomatoes, is you'll get super excited because you'll see the flowers and then you'll have some little tomatoes on there and then they will stay green for what seems like forever. Um, so that's something that's important to know is tomatoes grown in a hydroponic environment, while they do grow quicker than their outdoor counterparts, they do take much, much longer to ripen, but they will 
you'll just have to wait. So if you're worried that they're, they're, you're doing something wrong because they're still green, you're not, just wait, they will ripen. It's just gonna take a really, really long time. So back to what I was talking about earlier when I was mentioning these covers and these covers and the importance of not letting light get down to the water. Because if you let light get into the water and even if you do everything in your power to not let the light in, it can still happen, but you will probably deal with algae and you're, it's just going to be this green scum that's potentially all over the place growing on the pods. Um, it, it can just take over. Um, and that is because to basically, if you have water, nutrients, and light, you are going to have algae. And in a hydroponic environment, we need all of those three things. So the only thing that you can eliminate or do your best to eliminate is the light getting to the water. And then you just have the water and the nutrients so you can reduce your um, issues with algae. Another thing that can seriously freak out people when they're growing hydroponically for the first time or for the first little bit is they will put in their pods, they will you know, get everything set up, and then they'll come back a few days later and they'll see this white fluffy stuff, a lot of people call it mold, that they will see on the pods. And do not panic, it is not bad. It is actually a beneficial fungi, it's called mycelium, and it can be, it, it's good and it works in conjunction with your plant roots. That said, if it really bothers you, you can just take a Q-tip and remove it, but you definitely don't have to. A lot of people also ask about the little domes and when to take them off. So pretty much these are going to help when they're on top of the pods. Well, when they're on top of the pods. And what I like to do is I like to stick it onto the pod first and then pop the whole thing in. Otherwise, sometimes these don't stay on. Um, but basically these are gonna act like little tiny greenhouses for your plants for when they're getting started. So the general rule of thumb that I use is when the leaves are getting up and going to be touching the dome, then we wanna take it off. Because otherwise, if there's any um, transpiration that's going on, and you might see some what looks like condensation on there, that's actually from the plants breathing. Um, but if they can touch on there, then and it's right against the the leaves, and with this acting like a magnifying glass, it can actually burn the leaves, and we don't want that. So as soon as it gets close to touching, you can remove the domes. I've always just used these ones in my arrow garden, but I'm starting to get a little bit more curious of some other ones. So I want to try some Fox Farm. There's a couple of other ones I want to try. Uh, but because I do have my rise garden um, and that one has different nutrients for different stages, it's kind of got me thinking more about changing the levels of nutrients, which I haven't played around with as much, uh, at least not in the arrow garden and in the rise, they have a whole AI system that tells you exactly how much to put in. Um, but it's definitely something I want to learn a little bit more about myself and, and what I'm putting in at what point and what am I giving it. So that's something I'm going to be looking into. So I might do a video on that in the future once I learn more, but for these ones have served me well for four plus years and down growing down on the air garden farm plus or I haven't seen anything wrong with them but uh, if you want to use something different then go ahead and do that recently I got some a sample from earth medicine um, I'll put the the link down here um, I have a code that gets you ten dollars off and they just came out with a soilless version that you can use in a hydroponic environment so I'm going to be doing a separate video on using those so that's going to be another nutrient that I'm going to be trying out um, which I'm really super excited to try so that's pretty much all my tips for getting started uh, growing hydroponically. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to know if you're just getting started with hydroponics, growing hydroponically, especially for me as a micro home setter. I love it as a way to extend my growing season and also to free up a little bit of space in my garden. I don't need to grow the lettuce outside because it grows fantastic in a hydroponic situation. So I tend to grow my lettuce inside and not really grow it outside, which then gives me more space to grow things like onions and stuff outside. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up because YouTube loves that and then it helps me reach more people. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy the little things and go out there and make food grow. Bye guys.